Hey, what's up YouTube? Thought I'd share with you guys what I got in the mail today. I got the Innovative Marine Universal Controller. And the reason I got the Universal Controller is because I actually want to get rid of a couple of these outlets here. So on that left hand side there, I have two lights and two heaters connected. And with this universal controller, I should be able to only use up one slot versus two. And that way I have two empty ones. My lights turned off as soon as I move. Since they're motion sensing, they turn on. If you guys are interested in those lights, I think I mentioned them in the previous video for my SR80. But I think the brand is called Govi. If you don't want to go look at the video, actually. So let's unbox this universal controller. All right, guys, let's open up this Helio universal controller and see what's inside. The top part just slides off. Leave that there. In the box, you seem to have this another cardboard cover that probably just slides onto there as well. Got your link to register your product. Here you have the Helio Universal Controller Guide for Operation Safety. I like reading these after I install it. It's just the way I do it. But what this heater actually gives you the option to do is to set a temperature, right? You'll have a high and a low. You have your power indicator as that states. An element indicator for line one and line two. I did get the universal controller versus their specific heater because I already have heaters here at home and I didn't want to buy another heater. So I figured I could just use regular heaters with this setup um, because this actually comes with outlets. Two different outlets that you can control. So yeah, let's continue this unboxing. Seems like they give you a little Piece of Velcro, probably for the controller itself. And here's the controller. So on the far right of the controller, here you have the two outlets. In the center, I would assume this connection here is for the probe itself and then of course on the left you have power since that sensor probe is actually kind of small um, obviously you need an extension and here's that extension I think this is a titanium probe that's pretty cool just connect it there and then run it Looks like, I think that's all they include in the box, actually. Another piece of Velcro. Pro they include two, probably because this little box does have some weight to it, so. Yeah, let me get this installed and then I'll show you guys how I kind of set everything up inside of the cabinet. I did miss one thing, actually. On the bottom left corner here, you have a magnet. It's pretty strong too actually. But this is meant to hold the probe. Temperature probe. So yeah, let's get this installed and see how it goes. Hey guys, so the first thing that I decided to do is actually 
work on the Velcro. So I'm taking off the little plastic that comes with it and then installing it on the back of the controller itself. I got one installed. And it's kind of tricky finding the edge to this sometimes, but just gotta work with it for a little bit. You'll eventually find the edge and uh, be able to install this. Got the second one. I do only take one back off at a time so that you can really press it down after you get one side on. And then I'll probably go back, make sure these are aligned. Wave at my motion sensing lights. And then I'll actually go in and pick up these corners off camera because it's a pain sometimes. So since my controller is here, I thought I'd install it pretty close to it. I'm trying to keep everything kind of organized inside my cabinet here. So I also do not want to undo this cable, this cable tie that they've actually placed here. So in order for me to keep that, I'd have to put the controller itself pretty close. So to install this, I think this would be a good spot. And since it's only going to be connected here, I am actually going to just install this here. Cool. There we go. That is installed now. Now I'm going to have to find the outlets for the two heaters, but I'm pretty sure it's this top one and this second one because I think I try to keep it pretty organized when I install this. So I will disconnect one and disconnect two. Although this Innovative Rain heater module monitors your highs and your lows, I think being able to have your separate heaters that have their own thermostat. Like this is a Neotherm that actually has its own thermostat and I can tell what it's set at. I think it's just like a, a another layer of redundancy, right? So there's one heater connected and then this is the other heater. So there, I'll connect these. Like I said, each heater has its own individual thermostat, internal thermostat, right? So not only is my controller controlling what I want it set at according to its probe, but I also know that if the probe ever, then obviously the room probably stays at 70 degrees. So if the room stays at 70 degrees, it's gonna keep heating and heating and heating. If these were connected to a titanium heater, but because it's not connected to a titanium heater, they're not gonna stay on because they have their own temperature uh, thermostat that's built internal to each one of these heaters that I have, like I said. I think one's an Eheim. So yeah, I think it's just uh, another layer of redundancy there, having the controller control what it thinks, um, what, whatever I'm going to set this specific one to, right? Which is probably gonna be 78. I tried 80 and everything was fine in the tank, but I think it just evaporates too much water at 80. Um, I filled up the 10 gallon ATO reservoir that I do have. And it only lasted me like six and a half days. So I lowered the temperature back down to 78 and hopefully lowering it down to 78 will make it not evaporate so much water actually. Again, that's a door on the side of these innovator bring tanks. so. Gotta make sure uh, you close that back up if you want it closed. One thing that I am going to undo that they provided a cable tie for is the actual 
No, actually, no. I lied. I lied, I lied. Hence why I placed it so close to the outlets here for the heater. All right, guys, I have two free outlets on this left side for whatever I want. I don't know what I might need, but you never know with aquariums nowadays, they make so many cool gadgets, right? You could just add whatever you want, whether it be like a UV sterilizer or like a surface skimmer of some sort. You never know what you can add to these things or what you might need. So having extra outlets is definitely a good thing, I think. In the instructions themselves, an ST and an AT. ST stands for the set temperature and AT is the aquarium temperature. Currently mine is set at 78, because I set it at 78 and I had it alarm me whenever it got to over 80. My low temperature, for some reason it only lets me set it at 76. So I guess I'm gonna ride with 76 for now. So like I said, that those heaters won't turn on until after it gets below its set temperature. Uh, the aquarium temperature right now is currently sitting at 78.8. So maybe a little bit higher. Um, it could be because I have one of the heaters set to 79 versus 78, and that might have been what was keeping it at that temperature, but the Helio Universal Controller. And I just thought I'd show you guys on how I installed it, how I'm going to be using it with my two existing heaters that I do have in the back chambers of my all-in-one. I'll show you guys here in a second actually how I set up the actual probe, temperature probe, inside of my tank. So next to that protein skimmer there, I have one heater in the second chamber, right? Cause that far left chamber has a media basket where I have all kinds of stuff. So I kind of did the same thing to this side, right? Where, oh, actually that, that's an upgrade I recently got, actually, I think yesterday. Here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is no longer a filter sock. It is a filter cup by Red Sea. Uh, the four inch one fit perfectly in there. So I did get rid of the filter sock because I hate cleaning those things. So I think it's just a lot easier to replace like filter floss versus having to replace a whole filter sock. I think I could just, I could just swap out the filter floss a lot easier. That's for sure. Like I said, back to the heaters. I did have a heater in that second chamber after that filter cup but I moved it to the center chamber where I do have both of the return pumps. And I put the probe in the second chamber here. So that way, everything that's coming in on this left side is heating and everything returning in the center is heating. But I do have this right side to keep track of what's coming in from the tank into the back chambers. So that hopefully it just kind of all matches up it'd be nice if we had two probes because then i'd put the other probe on the opposite side and i would just heat in the center because that way everything going into the back chambers would be what we need to heat right but i think that'll work i hope we'll see yeah guys just wanted to show you guys those couple things and how I have my heater set up in my SR80. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Co-Reefing, out.